At first glance, the American coot may look like a rather drab bird, but a closer look reveals a simple elegance in their color patterns. From the distinct gleam of their droopy white bill to the subtle red dashes above their forehead and within their eyes, the coot is clearly a snappy dresser. Despite what the adage may say, the coot certainly has somewhere to go, that being freshwater ponds, lakes, rivers, and, well, sewage plants across northern and central America. In these bodies of water, coots can be seen mixing with all sorts of ducks, though the blackbird is not a duck itself. In fact, the coot is a highly specialized type of rail, relying on flat lobed toes to propel itself through the water, instead of the webbed feet that define ducks and geese. The funny little bird uses these segmented toes, as well as its rear-placed legs, to expert effect as it dives below the surface in search of plants, insects, fish, tadpoles, mollusks, and annelids. Being an opportunistic omnivore, the coot will pretty much eat anything that it can get its beak around. When not diving for food, these water dwellers can be seen swimming along ponds, punctuating their paddles with poultry-like pumps of their head. While American coots are permanent residents of most of western North America, they travel to the east only during their migration period. Despite this period lasting all the way from August to December, it is a very uncommon occurrence to see flocks of flying coots. According to Dale D. Humberg, the senior scientific advisor of Ducks Unlimited, this is because coots will mainly take wing only at night. With such a long runway needed to launch into a frankly clumsy flight pattern, the cover of darkness likely helps the coots avoid many of the predators that would otherwise take delight in spotting a flock of the awkward flyers. Eventually, of course, this transition period in the life of coots comes to an end, and as the seasons turn, the coots... well mostly stay the same. Unlike many of the flashier swimmers, the breeding season does not result in a change of plumage for the mud hens. Instead, the coot relies on other methods of courtship. The female begins the process with head bowed low near the water and wings bent high toward the back of the body. The consummation of courtship typically begins on water and ends on land. It then falls to both members of the couple to begin construction of the nest. A coot's nest is an interesting sight. A floating platform of carefully placed sticks upon which both the male and female will guard the eggs. However, if the coots don't feel like going through all that trouble, they will occasionally engage in parasitism by laying their eggs in the nest of another coot or even a duck or gull. For the parents who do decide to rear their own young, they must fiercely defend their floating nest for up to 23 days, upon which the brood will finally hatch. These young ones may seem to outpace their parents in color, but this is for good reason. The fledgling period is treacherous, with nestlings unable to swim as their lobed toes develop properly. As such, they are preyed upon by many, and need as much food as possible to grow strong. The colors are used as attention getters for their parents. The brighter a baby coot, the more likely it is to be given preferential treatment ahead of its eight to ten siblings. After a period of five to eight weeks of care from their parents, the coots are fully grown, and if they are lucky, will live a long full life, which for the American coot averages around nine years. Thanks for watching. I hope you all had as much fun learning about this spunky mud hen as I did. If you'd like to see more videos, my channel currently has three others. And for future content, comment below what type of bird you'd like to see covered next. My sources for information and photos are in the description if you'd like to dig any deeper. Happy birding!